Autism can be hard to recognize, which is why it is often described as a hidden disability. There are also many stereotypes of autism in popular culture, which fail to reflect the diversity of life experienced by people on the spectrum. These kinds of challenges contribute to what is known as the double empathy problem, the two-way misunderstandings that many autistic people experience, which can have a profound effect on their relationships, employment and quality of life. My research has helped to provide empirical insights into the double empathy problem. I have been investigating the psychological factors that can help improve understanding between autistic and non-autistic people. Throughout my ESRC funded doctorate, I have worked with Matthews Hub, one of the few charities in the UK to support autistic adults. Many of their members feel autism is misunderstood and misrepresented in society. One issue members have raised often is the complete lack of autistic voices within the way the narrative of autism is shaped, both in research and in popular culture. So I began to wonder whether there was more I could be doing as a researcher to help promote autistic perspectives in the public domain. ESRC funding enabled me to create the Open Minds Photography Exhibition, which attracted over 1,500 visitors. This was an interactive exhibition featuring portraits of people I'd researched. The exhibition allowed members of the public to approach the portraits and to hear them speak about their life experiences. I wanted to break down the idea that it is impossible to interact with people on the spectrum by including a diverse range of voices and experiences. Growing up being autistic, um, considering of course I'm a child of the 90s, so growing up in the 90s as a kid with autism, people still didn't understand it at the time. So really a lot of my behavior was chalked up to being naughty, being mentally disabled and other things like that, instead of like, you know, a more focused means of trying to basically help me integrate into society. So Brent's exhibition, being able to give a speech at that about the experiences and how I personally felt on the matter, it was very good. And things like that are a good opportunity for people with autism to build their confidence. But also, of course, because I no longer had anxiety, it felt even better, you know, because I could focus on something. But also, I felt better because I'd taken part in something to help others that are more like me. To give further insight into autistic perspectives, I made the Walking with Campbell video, which is now being used by a number of local councils and charities in the UK and internationally. Campbell is autistic and has severe learning difficulties, and before my doctorate I was one of his carers walking with him across town. The video illustrates how easy it is to underestimate the unique ways that Campbell relates to the world, and how the behaviour of others can impact his anxiety. In addition to improving public understanding of autism, there are also methodological challenges with the approaches that researchers use to study human interaction. I have therefore created new tools that other researchers can use, such as software, which can explore the effect of social labels on collaboration. I've also translated my academic knowledge into more accessible forms through using animations so that my research can reach all people and not just academics.